but also got me into bodybuilding and I will be honest enough to say it I needed to deviate from calisthenics I needed to because there was a lot of disconnect happening um, and it was only starting to destroy me a little bit from the inside because I only saw so much potential that could be brought out from calisthenics um, without all the talk of the beef between certain people because that's not my life. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh to all the Ripper Hadith disciples, YouTubers, and viewers, man. Welcome back to a new video on Rip Right HD. And today I got one of Wingate's <laughs> finest, <laughs> if not the finest, the real 11 legend. You know, shout out to D Real, man. How you feeling today, D Real? I feel good, man. I feel really great. Um, every day is a new day. Every day is a blessing by itself. So I could never really complain. Um, if I have to complain, I mean, to what reason am I having to, you know, to say or do those type of things? So outside of everything else, I'm still alive and it's a blessing to be here. Nice, nice. So we want to get into a little bit about you. Mm. How old were you when you started calisthenics? What made you get into it? And you know what made you do it with Wingate? Um, when I started calisthenics, I was sixteen, uh, fifteen, coming into sixteen in terms of competitions and getting into that lifestyle. Um, what got me primarily into Wingate was this is my background. Uh, for everyone who lives around the area as well, you know, we're not that far from each other So this was the closest in terms of my progression and where I wanted to come to before Before Wingate being what Wingate is now, it, there wasn't much out of my memories of the top of my head Wingate was just It was a storage facility. It was like a smaller area for them to put up a lot of their chairs and supplies and stuff like that There was nothing really there to begin with the playground was there, the basketball court's been there, but out of what what, what Wingate is now, there wasn't much. Um, all I do remember is when I came to the park when I was younger, I was always in the playground, you know, um, coming to the basketball court, you know, with you know my brothers and stuff like that. But outside that, I wasn't really doing much. Um, then one day, Wingate, the park, just started to really build into it and put up bars, and um, I just started to come in there one day because I wanted to deviate from. The basketball court you know that's an extension by itself that can attract so much positive and negative things um, and I got my positive from it um, but I started to see a lot of negative negative things coming towards so I needed to deviate from that um, I had my sight of the playgrounds for quite some time and you know there was a time for that as well and then there was just a time for me to just walk into Wingate without anyone having to tell me I just saw it there and I was like, let me start going that in that direction to see what was over there. Um, didn't know anybody over there, I just went over there one day. Um, and that's when I had met Doc. Um, and for people, that. shout out to Doc, for people who know who I am and how my background was, I wasn't the talkative type. And I'm, nor am, am I still a talkative type. I'm really just a quiet person in general. I keep to myself um, in my realm. Um, but every day I would go to the park and just, you know, watch the other cats do their workouts and stuff like that i would just i would just watch um of course taking as much knowledge as much as possible um i absorbed everything in and i would still go up from time to time i was you know also into other things you know martial arts and other active sports in my life so i had some form of um activity to keep myself you know stable um and then after that i met doc and you know doc was saying you know try doing some reps here and there um, and I started to do that, and then one thing just led to the next, you know? And it's easy for me to tell myself to do things as long as it falls into my realm of my active lifestyle, what keeps me in check and what disciplines me and makes me stay on the lane that I need to stay in without having to deviate, you know, into um, what society just has to, you know, offer. So, um, yeah, it's just one thing led to the next, and 
competition started to roll up, then Doc was telling me to, you know, um, get into competitions. I was signing up, people signing me up in competitions. And then one thing led to the next, and here we are now. Yeah. Okay. So, if you don't mind giving your age and how long you've been actually into calisthenics and some of the people that mentored you or helped you throughout your journey or inspired you? Um, right now I am 29 um, and I've been in calisthenics for going on, well, I feel like 14, 14 15 years, years yes. coming in now. Um, and my mentors, um, is a, is a ton of people. My, ton of people. My, my, my mentors really are just anyone that I was able to grasp some form of knowledge or experience is something that I can hold on to and use to my um, environment. Um, so I had a lot of people as mentors really to me. Um, the closest person, if I had to really say it, was just Doc because Doc was the closest person that I met first and along the way um, stuck with me, you know, from beginning to where we are now. But at the end of the day, I never really said I was gonna like stick to one person. It was just whoever was closest to me in that area at the time. Of course, um, you know, I sat down and listened to them and I got my insight as well as put my input. Um, and as a model that we've always come to follow by, each one teach one. So yes. I'm, never, I'm never about just taking it from one person. I'm always about taking knowledge from everyone else as well as putting my input and insight into where that is. Okay. So now some of your accomplishments dealing with competition and battles. How many have you been in in total and how many have you won? Uh, if you can even uh, even recall, at least <laughs> on paper, some of the accolades, some of the... Um, it's not even on paper as much as the amount of trophies I have um, in my house. Um, I am known as the most decorated athlete in the calisthenic game. Shout out to um, you, man. Respects. From starting if i had to think where my dates of competitions and trophies started it was like 2011. nice um i think i may have some further back but i think it started at like 2010. um shout outs to um matrix and everybody else from nbxa competitions and um, pull up park jam and winter reps um, there's just been so many along the way. Um, if I haven't set anybody out right now, um, apologies for not coming off the top of my head. It's just been a long experience of just so many interactions and experiences that um, it's, hard for really, it's hard for me to really bring everybody up to part. But naturally, I've had to say from 2010 going on till now. Nice. So you, you, are you undefeated? Um, in the realms of undefeated, I have lost before. And now if you want to be specific in terms of what direction are we going with undefeat, then it's like if you're looking at competitions where someone has challenged me and wanted to come in the competitions like we do with the bar, bar brawls bra. here, then I am undefeated in that status right now. I hold the title um, nice. as being undefeated in the bar brawls, but I have been to many competitions where I have, you know, lost, but I have always placed. Place. And that is the thing that um, I think is very important for a lot of people to understand as well when it comes to what is the definition of winning. Um, it's not always really first um, in the eyes of so many people. You are your own competitor. You are your own opponent. You're no matter who you are standing next to or in front of or whatever it is. You are always going to be challenging yourself. So ideally enough to me, just knowing that I've always been able to place, no matter where I really have ever been, whether it was first, second, or third, has always been you know, an acceptance for me no matter what. That's what um, and I have some third place medals. I have second place. I have a ton of firsts. But I have always placed and I've always gone home with trophies. And that is nice. a big success to me no matter what. And I'm always going to take that as, as an accomplishment. Okay, for some of the viewers, y'all might not know what a bar brawl is. So, a bar brawl is when you go head to head with one person. It's a one on one. You're given a routine. Um, you have a certain amount of time to practice the routine. And if and when you come out and do the routine, the first one to finish the routine actually wins. Now, how many times have you been in the bar brawl? So you're undefeated in the bar brawl. Uh, it's been. three competitions three there was one so it would make four we did have like a team competition 
Um, not on tape. <clears throat> that is on footage as well, I believe so. Um, we always try to record everything to save up. I don't know if it has been posted um, or if anyone did really record that, but that was a team-based competition. Um, we did not win that one. Um, but out of the one-on-one -on -one apparatus and focus of what the bar brawl is, I've been in three competitions and I hold the title for each one. Nice, nice. Now I've seen you, your worth ethic, man. So like for some of the people coming into calisthenics beginning and they, they, they wanna get on that elite level, what are some of the gems and jewels and like, you know, essentials that they would need to get there um for just fitness in general or in terms of like calisthenics yeah instead in terms of calisthenics um it's 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 one is gonna be uh one is gonna be the starting um focal point is just getting yourself Started. going into that into that pattern so that movement is the first thing but after that it's really the consistency um it is very hard for most people to it may, be, it may be easy for most people to say, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna attempt to do this. Um, and saying is only half the battle and attempting it is the, the primary end result after that. Um, if not the end result, um, it at least is the starting point for the ripples and the effect to go on afterwards. Um, the end result, if there is really an end result, is the results that come you know, to show. Um, with everything at that point, wherever you can really get it. If it's in a gym, if you have some apparatus or set up at your, your own home, um, if you have a park like we have one, wherever you can get it. But the first thing I would say is one, go ahead and sit down and say to yourself, what do I wanna do? If I am gonna start into fitness and start those changes. And after that, start to plan out exactly how am I gonna start executing that. Okay, as I can see at the beginning of this video, he has mastered a lot of different moves in calisthenics. And I say master because I've been watching this guy, right? So you have to do your research. Now we wanna ask him, what what was the, 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 the reason for trying to get into bodybuilding? Was it because calisthenics got boring or you wanted to add mass or you know you just wanted to switch it up? Um, I'm glad you asked that question and to really put a clear focus on why I did that um, Bodybuilding has always been an interest to me in general mm. <clears throat> Bodybuilding has always been there from the start. We all know what bodybuilding is We all already kind of follow, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger and yes, everybody as it indeed. is So I have always had that in the back of my mind as um being a, a, a true fan of the sport, right? Um, it is a very arti artistic format to me as well. Uh, for most people who don't know, I am a true believer in art by itself and how it's portrayed. Um, and art can be portrayed in so many different ways. I grew up as a drawing and a dance background major as well. So that has always been something that has been my um, trigger when it comes to expressing myself without having to talk um, but bodybuilding has always been there in terms of just the aesthetic look and the, the full dynamics in terms of the strength and the capabilities that people are willing to push their body to <clears throat> and um, what got me there was I didn't know how to get there in the beginning. It was more of like, I didn't know who to talk to or whatever I needed to do. Um, along the way, just living life, it approached itself when I engulfed myself into fitness in general. Um, when I started you know, um, working at Equinox, um, which is the gym that I am associated with now, I am a personal trainer there, um, a professional. Um, been with um, Equinox for five years in the company and going nice. forward from there, but outside I've been a professional trainer for long on about 12 years in. Nice. Um, and in the forefront of being there for so long and into fitness, I have come to meet so many great people that has brought that to my attention and brought me in that realm of bodybuilding and then after that I just was like oh wow like okay this is how I get into that I didn't know how to do it before 
it's the connections. You need to know people, if anything, or find someone that can help you get into the avenue. And I found the people, um, and it's been a blessing ever since. And I've been doing bodybuilding going on to five years now as well. Um, but what also got me into bodybuilding, and I will be honest enough to say it, I needed to deviate from calisthenics. I needed to because there was a lot of disconnect happening um, and it was only starting to destroy me a little bit from the inside because I only saw so much potential that could be brought out from calisthenics um, without all the talk of the beef between certain people because that's not my life. So with everything that has been going on and with all the... Um, the talk and the discussions and the arguments and everything that was going on, um, I didn't see any real progress being made. I felt like we all just for a second stopped and literally just took a shorter breath and could not pick up that momentum and go on forward again. So afterwards, I just needed to take a break from it. I needed to find my center and my oxygen, my breathing, um, and I needed to keep moving forward. So cool. I needed to take a, a step away from calisthenics and um, get myself into into um, some other form of active fitness. and fitness. Oh. And not even just into fitness as well, but just some form of motion. I needed to stay active in some form just to keep my physical and my mental um, sanity in check. So what that that when it comes to the golden era like we say, you know, that era where you came up in um you would say what what are the uh, the negatives and positives? Uh the golden era in calisthenics. In calisthenics. Um there is always going to be a ton of positives. I can never take anything out from being a positive format because um, we all do this for a living. We yes. all have some form of avenue or trigger that has us doing this to keep ourselves in check. Um, whether it is to detach ourselves from everything else around us or to allow us to find some connection with everything around us. Um, that is by itself a positive look on its own because that is something that as humans in general we need to build we need to build some form of connection to the outside world or the inside world or just to ourselves um, and that by itself is the most positive thing I can take on it um, it's 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 the right for change nice. um, and, and I could never take that as a negative if I had to say anything negative, it's just the fact that we could allow ourselves to fall that low with all the beef and destruction that we had to do within each other, then which led on to each other as well. Um, that's not the route we need to go to. And the fact that we could let ourselves slip um, from the positive focus of what we were trying to reach just because of... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Just because of... Ego. Ego. That's it. Yeah. That's, that's the best word I can look at. Whether it's ego or pride or um, the torch. Not wanting to just pass that or just be honest and know that we're not always right. We don't know everything. That's the whole point of the model that we follow by. Um, each one teach one. We live by learning, right? Most people will always look at an L is not a loss but is a lesson and by itself that's not something to just take and hold it as um, a wound no it's not the whole point out of, out of anything is to grow heal from it learn from what you have to do and take it to where you have to take it but the fact that the, the, the most thing I could take out of it being negative is the fact that we could we could we could even come to that point to stoop that low Yes. And that's the negative thing that I, I did not see coming because I'd expect that to just climb constantly to the highest peak of evolution physically and mentally. And I was like, yo, this is incredible. Like, I never even thought I'd be here. I never thought I could even look like this just from this by yes. itself. And I was a firm believer in never touching weights to begin with. <clears throat> I was always the type to be like, you don't you need can it. just get it from just body weight, more inner strength. And I was like, yo, this is amazing. I, I was literally high above the clouds and I was like, yo, I'm never gonna come down. And soon to believe, I literally had to come down. 
I literally had to come down and take a break from that high elevated point and I was like yo I feel like I feel like my wings have just been clipped mm. and I feel like I wasn't flying anymore. in terms of my own center I feel like I will always be able to fly and, and reach the, the levels that I want to reach. But in terms of as a family and a camaraderie and group, I felt like that was only being destroyed from within. And I could not hold that to myself. I could not be in a group like that that wasn't going to be able to stay together and grow without them being some form of disagreements separation. or separation. And after that, I was like, for now, I just need, I just need to deviate. Okay, now would you say you were there from the start, meaning the start in of actual team when they when the name was placed there okay uh, can yes. you remember the year or i cannot remember the year exactly but i was there exactly when we thought about coming up with a logo and a team and everything for wingate park nice. by itself um i was with doc at the time when we were thinking about it um um and we were just in the cycle of also you know coming up with the for that forefront of being like the most dominant team you know yeah, yeah. Um, there were so many other teams are coming up in competitions and all of this that um, we were like yeah we just got to do this and then um, Doc um, had to connect with one of his his um, closest family that were into logos and stuff and then we just kind of came up with the idea he ran it by us where it was and then one thing came to the next and that logo just became what it is. Can can you re remember some of the original members from the stock? Um, if you can name. Yeah, a few. I mean the original members and the true members that's gonna be. I mean, there's always gonna be other, you know, people that's part of the family, but the true now, team, hey. the uh, you may call us the Avengers of Wicked, yeah, you know, yeah. by itself. <laughs> um, it's myself, Doc. Um, uh, shout out to Abs. Abs, shout um, out to Abs, yo. Jomo, um, Twin, um, B Rock, um, Brian. Um, uh, oh, well, we gonna get all of them. As long as shout out to a really, really. Um, we Doc had given us the the representation of Double Dragon. Um, and shout out to a really, really close friend of mine. I hope he is safe where he is. Um, but Dre. Dre. Dre was another person. Dre was the Double Dragon, you know, oh, the other yeah. side of the coin to, to my, you know, Yang as it is. And um, Dre was another person that was officially part of the team as well. Um, and shout out to so many other people. Moses. Shout um, out to Moses. That's Mel. My uh, Mel. Um, shout out to so many of the people that were uh, Mario. Shout out to so many people that were officially part of the team as well. And that was it, you know. You can go back to just so many other videos and yeah. see so many faces. Yeah, I'm um, researching. But that was the team by by itself in a nutshell. And if there's anyone that, again, has not come up in my mind, apologies. But you were never forgotten. You will always be remembered for being Without a part of that doubt. team. And that team is not destroyed. That never. team is always going to be there. Okay, now I'm gonna just close out with a statement, right? Everybody that I mentioned that I was coming to interview D-Rail, man, it was nothing but good. So we want to say shout out to D-Rail, especially Simi. Simi said, yo, tell D-Rail, I said, <laughs> he is a legend. And he's one of the ones that put Wingate on the map. So shout out to Simi, he's doing his thing. And we appreciate uh, you, D-Rail, for actually doing this interview and taking the time, man. Time is money. Time, man. And we appreciate it, man. Shout out to Team Thank Wingate, Doc, and everybody, man. Stay tuned, y'all. Stay real. Indeed, in the body, literal translation is a lump of flesh, a piece of meat. And when that lump of flesh...